week um we normally talk to you guys about sports and everything that's going on like that we will because there are things that are happening in sports that are definitely relevant to the situation at hand uh but this is going to be a bit of a different episode this is going to be uh something that um needs to be talked about on all platforms, every platform that it can. Um, it's, it needs to be talked about. And uh, with me, Country K, as always. So. And joining us today, the mysterious DJ Badsticks. <laughs> What's going on? What's going on, man? How you guys been this whole week? Man, it's been a rough week. Yeah. <laughs> it's, been, it's been rough. That's the best way to put it. Bro, it's just frustrating. It really is. Like I, I can't I can't stress enough like how frustrating it is to just watching all these videos and just I probably should just stop because I feel my blood just <laughs> but it's like I can't even imagine like and I've and I've said it in posts and I've said it before it's like you know I can't even begin to imagine what black people go through on a daily basis but you know definitely not ignorant to what the facts are you know I can't say I've you know lived you know anything you know I've the majority of my friends have stories of dealing with the police at one point in their life more than once i can't relate to that i can't say that i ha i've i've the most that's ever happened to me is i've gotten pulled over twice let off with a warning the only ticket really i ever got was fucking jaywalking right when i was in high school that's the only thing that i could really <laughs> you know what i'm saying so it's like and then seeing all these ignorant ass people that are online that they're not even focused on the issue they they're not focused on what the key motivation to all of this is yeah whether it's rioting whether it's you know loot lo i mean i can't say that i necessarily agree with the looting but I'm not in any position to tell, you know, somebody how to show and express their anger, especially after this long. You would think in 2020, we'd, we'd learn by now. You would think after the 1960s, you know, we would at least learn a little bit, but just, I, I, I'm just baffled. People aren't willing to listen. They're just not willing to listen. Um, I think perfect example of that is like four years ago, uh, when the mixed breed took a knee. When Cap took a knee, that showed you pretty much what everything was. Like that made national news. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And people's reactions and stuff like that. That, that showed me. I, I mean, I, it didn't show me anything because I mean. 
where we're from kind of already know what the whole situation is and how people hold different standards and stuff like that. So, um, personally, I wasn't surprised about a lot of this stuff that's been going down, but it still hurts, man. Like, it still hurts. Like, uh, like I told you uh, the other day, like, I couldn't even edit the last episode for, like, days because I was just messed up, you know what I mean? Crying, feeling the pain. Like, I felt like that was my people's, and I don't know none of them, you know what I mean? The only connection I had with George Floyd was watching Steven Jackson, you know what I'm saying? And that's it. Like, that was it. And I will it wasn't even like like an extra fandom type situation. I just I felt like if that was like my brother or my cousin or something, and I, it just hurt me. And then just going through all the stuff, like it was the same thing for me when Trayvon got killed. Like it was the same exact thing. I real like his kids from Florida, and he was play football. He was a quarterback. You know what I mean? And he was going into his senior year, and he like bro, that was what are y'all talk? What are y'all talk? Please. <laughs> no, I definitely get it. Uh, this week, yeah, it's just <clears throat> like you said, like all the ignorant people that are just on Facebook, it's just one after another. And it's just like right now, everybody just being exposed, you know, from the White House all the way down. We knew Trump was an idiot from the beginning, and he's just showing his ass big time right now. And like, man, just shut your oh. mouth. You ain't doing nothing but adding fuel to the fire. Just don't say nothing. You know, you want to pose with Bibles in front of churches and do this and that. It's like, man, miss me with all of that. And he hidden his I, I get the looting. And the, <laughs> yeah. Just, he hidden his bunker I get from the peaceful protesters. <laughs> yeah. He gassed in flashbangs. You see that in peaceful protesters to take a fucking photo op at a church he doesn't go to. Mm-hmm. What, what, bro, it's just... And then the police, okay, look, I've definitely seen the videos where the police is walking with the people, taking a knee with the people. That's happening. But you, mm-hmm. we're not, we're not going to say that that doesn't happen. Obviously, that happens. The problem from the very beginning has always been the pr- police brutality. And even with all of this, we're seeing that. It's being exposed <laughs> daily basis everywhere across the country. Mm-hmm. I saw a video today, a 75-year-old man getting shoved, bleeding in the back of his head, mm-hmm. fucking out on the ground. They just walked by him. Yeah. 54 of those officers, yeah. they mm-hmm. all quit in support. Mm-hmm of the guys who got suspended for those actions. How the fuck are people supposed to feel safe Mm -hmm. when they know the police are against them? It just, Uh my heart's going right now. Like I'm just, I'm, I'm my brother-in-law Black, my niece and nephew, two mixed babies, but you know they're black. I fear for them all the time, for you guys all the time, close friends of mine all the time because of shit like this. Damn, am I going to see one of my boys on the news dealing with this? Like, it... Am I going to end up seeing my brother-in-law on the news at one point? My niece and nephew getting pinned down by a fucking <clears throat> overhyped cop? Like, what? I, I'm, That's the only thing that I can say that I relate. Like, the fear is not for myself, for my family and friends. Like, this, it, and the fact that people don't get it. They don't get it. They think the rioting is, be- and obviously it's mostly white people who aren't listening. You know, everyone's defending Drew Brees. Okay, Drew Brees, what he said, he fucked up. He fucked up. Mm-hmm. He, he, he didn't think that one through. <clears throat> obviously he didn't think that one through. 
Uh, his apology. Yeah. His apology immediately after that. I it, mean, it, it, it's okay. Michael Thomas forgave him, and to be completely honest, that's because he wants their receptions this year. <laughs> I mean. But he's got his own teammates and obviously players all around the league. You know, from all the backlash, you wanted to – did it sound a little disingenuine? Yeah. Kind of sounded like, oh, his agent came up. Oh, you know, we need to protect your legacy and career. This was a horrible time for you to say something like that. And then he even put – Drew Brees is on an apology world tour right now. Mm -hmm. Literally five yeah. minutes ago, Adam Schefter posted this. Drew Brees sent a message to Donald Trump. He said this, through my ongoing conversations with friends, teammates, and leaders in the black community, I realize this is not an issue about the American flag. It has never been. Duh, we've been saying that from the beginning. We can no longer use the flag to turn people away or distract them from the real issues that face our black communities. We did this back in 2017 and regretfully, I brought it back with my comments this week. We must stop talking about the flag and shift our attention to the real issues of systemic racial injustice, economic oppression, police brutality and judicial and prison reform. We are in a crucial juncture in our nation's history if not now, then when? We as a white community need to listen and learn from the pain and suffering of our black communities. We must acknowledge these problems, identify the solutions, and then put this into action. The black community cannot do it alone. This will require all of us. That's what he sent to Trump. All right, two things, two things. First, not defending them at all. But they did specifically ask him about the national anthem. It wasn't about the protest. It wasn't about that. It was about the national anthem. So he wasn't off par. Granted, he should have just did some Tom Brady shit and just played the fifth or some shit. Like, um, it's not a good time to discuss this. Or like, I, I, you know what I mean? Some old P political PR type shit situation shit. You know what I'm saying? I, that's first. Secondly. I see how I'm gonna say this without sounding like a raging dick. Um, no, fuck it. Fuck Drew Brees. Simple as that. Fuck Drew Brees. Uh, thank you for the Super Bowl. Uh, I'm gonna just go ahead and thank you now before we even start practice. Uh, Tom Brady not dumb enough to say some shit like this, even though he got multiple pictures with the MAGA hat. So I understand what I have on my team. I realize that. And also, that picture he put up with the fucking hands, you know, the black and white hands, uh, he bought that. Like, he bought that from off a website and just put a long-ass caption and shit like that. A comedian, uh, Kevin on stage, he pretty much exposed that on one of his Instagram posts. He went to the website, pulled the picture up, and showed how much Drew Brees paid for that picture. It was 12 bucks. 12 bucks. 12 bucks for an apology. So you feel like... You pay 12 bucks, give a long ass caption, and everything's gonna be good. Personally, personally, I, I don't see no different, bro. Uh, not shitting on your state or your, where your team from, but Texas is known for this kind of shit. Well, well mm -hmm. that's funny that you say that because I had put a post not too long ago with the Longhorns marching with everybody that there in Austin, which made me happy. Made me happy to see that because me being from Texas, I've been in California most of my life, but being from Texas, I know the mindset that's out there in Texas. I know that, you know, I'm obviously not from that branch, you know, from that, you know, fall from the tree. My brother's not, family's not, you know, Southeastern, Southwestern Texas majority is black and Mexican. So I came from a part of Texas that was very diverse. 
Now, as you get more northern toward Texas, getting towards into the you know Oklahoma, it starts to the diversity goes away a little bit. You know, so mm -hmm. to see this, you know, the Longhorns at least because they realize they have a lot of black players to come to the University of Texas and fucking perform and make them millions, if not billions of dollars on a yearly basis. They know that. Y'all yeah, still so, have Huh? Y'all still have that black coach? His name like Charlie something? No, no, it's uh, Tom Herman right now, but he marched with everybody too. Okay. The coaching staff and you know, all the players and everything, they all marched together throughout that whole thing in Austin. So I was like, hey, I'm good to see that. I saw a lot of things about people, you know, going after Joey Bosa, 49er fan, you know, He's had a history of being, you know, he's a Trump supporter. He ha he hasn't said anything. He's kept quiet. So I think Bosa at this point is in the listening phase. Before he comes out and says anything, I think he literally needs to fucking sit back and let I this is what I hope. Is this really what he's gonna do? That remains to be seen. But what he should do is literally look back on his decisions, look back on, you know, things that he said and come to a realization, you know what? Yeah, no, we, especially our coach, we got Shanahan coming out here saying what he said, which I was like, okay, yeah, that, that's good. That's a good start. Everybody's you know doing what we need to do, you know, but Shanahan was legitimately pissed that he's he's still shocked that you know we don't have more black coaches or minority coaches in in the league, not just coaches, but GMs, owners, you know, things like that. That's what I'm waiting to see. I'm waiting to see the first black owner. That once that happens, once the owners allow that to happen then you can kind of really see, okay, maybe the NFL's really starting to try and mend everything and actually move forward. You would hope. Who, uh, all right, two, two things. Do you think Jay-Z is going to be the first owner? First question. And did you see what Jake Fromm said? I did see what Jake Fromm said. And, again, I – his apology is it, just because he got caught is why he's apologizing. Mm -hmm. it, it at this point it really is because I see it. Well, wh what can a white person say? What were you to not sound like they're going one way? Again, you don't have to say anything. Just fucking listen. You know, it, it's with Jake from. It's really hard to believe any type of apology from white athlete, owner, player, doesn't even matter who it is. It's really hard to believe an or, you know, actually accept an apology at this point in time. You know, you know what's happening, or at least you would hope you would know what's happening at this point. Yeah, I've seen a lot. Jake from 21 years old. Who gives a fuck what age you are? First of all, I blame your parents for being ignorant fucks and not teaching you the right way. You know, and two, you you got to know better than that, dude. You have teammates, you know, that are carrying your fucking ass. Let's be real. Georgia was not good because of Jake Fromm. Oh, Nick Chubb. <laughs> okay. You know, so it, it, Jay Fromm had nothing to do with it. You know, so he, being in the locker room, you know, in football, you get that diversity all the time. Yeah, that's why I actually love the game, because you get that camaraderie from everyone from everywhere. You get an understanding. You guys work as a unit for the same goal. So... For a football player to have that mindset is baffling to me. It, it's absolutely baffling to me because at that point, at this age, it, 
saying some shit like that, you know, at that point, <laughs> everything up to that point in your career has been a fucking lie. Any of your teammates that might have had trust to you, trust in you before, I don't give a fuck about you now. We thought you were with us. We thought you were our boy hanging out with us, saying all the right things. And then this is as early as 2019. This was last year that these texts were happening. This was last year before the draft, before any of the – so it, it just goes to show – and, and then then that makes another point of, do you believe anything that comes out of a white person's mouth now? Because, yeah, they're cool with you up front, but what are they saying behind you behind closed doors? And that's why all of this exposure that's happening to these people now, that's really coming out, is really just... Maybe at that point, they start to realize, all right, maybe I am in the wrong here. Maybe I need to start looking at it a different way, hopefully. You know, and then with, uh, okay, before you said Jake Fromm, what was the first one? Um, Fuck, we're going to have to look back. What are we doing here? (laughs) Talking about uh, Breeze. Talking about Breeze Crump, and then you got Goodell issuing his statement today. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Goodell, yeah. Good, yeah. See, I like that, but it's kind of a show me. Yeah. Show me. You can talk all you want. Talk, time for talk is over now. Now is not the time for talk. Now, and then talking doesn't do shit anymore. Action does. Action has. That uh, message. I saw the the post you put when you said, uh, "Oh, riots and you know all this stuff doesn't help." But look at everything that's happened in the last few days. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. Yep. Since yeah. all of these protests and stuff, how many different you know executive, not executive orders from the White House, obviously, but like from the mayoral <laughs> positions and you mm-hmm. know governor positions and all that. Look at all the different things that have been happening there. It's just now they're actually putting places in like Dallas, Dallas put out a, what is it? A, a, I put it up a little bit ago, a duty to intervene. Meaning if you're a partner of another officer, that's fucking dope. If you're a partner of the other officer and that other officer is using excessive force, and you don't do anything about it, you're you're fucking toast. So I think that should be a nationwide thing. That should have been in place a long time ago. It's mm-hmm. amazing that Dallas is the one that's coming out with this. Because Dallas... That's because we them boys. <laughs> okay. <laughs> historically, <laughs> we're not talking about the team here. <laughs> but historically out there in, in Dallas, you know, police work and stuff like that has been very bad. Very bad out there. Yeah. yeah but everything that just happens and I've been looking at it going a lot of these videos that are popping up with the police, basically they're planting the bricks. They're, <laughs> they're basically doing everything in their power. My opinion. They're doing everything in their power to start an actual civil war. Because here's what's going to happen. The police are going to push... Oh, fuck, he changed his hair. Look at him. Whoa, whoa, whoa. whoa. Before you even go on your point, we got to address this. (laughs) <laughs> yeah. 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 
His audio is connected. Okay. His audio is connected. You can hear us That's now. Good. All right. So are you going for every fucking color of the rainbow when it comes to your hair? Or what What bet did you lose this time? No, nah, it wasn't a bet. I just wanted to change the color from red. I'm not really a red person, so. <coughs> Jesus Christ. I, I feel like Massey's would appreciate that because it's violent blue. That's right. <laughs> That's oh, definitely Yikes. <laughs> oh, get your lungs over there, man. How long have you had a blue? Uh, four days. What are we going right. to see next week? Are we going to see green? We should make that a thing. We should make that a thing on this show. A different color every show, every week? Hey, fuck it. We'll do it that way. I feel like you'll damage your hair follicles if you keep coloring it. <laughs> yeah, no, I, that's a real thing, though. Like, I'm I kinda, like, uh, hey, hey, I'm not going to lie, bro. I kind of fucked up. I didn't know you're not supposed to bleach your hair every single time you color your hair, bro. So I've been bleaching my hair. I bleached my hair three times in the last five fucking weeks, bro. It was oh, bad. Ooh, your hair is about to thin. <laughs> that's what I thought, bro. I'm like, I'm, I'm still waiting. So I mean, like, fuck it. Consequences, you know. All right. To get... To get back onto the point, the poli- I think the police right now at this point, it from my observation on, again, it's not happening everywhere. You have police officers that are walking and marching and protesting and doing all that stuff with, with the the protesters, which is a good sign. But in other areas, it definitely looks like with the brick planting, with you know basically shooting fucking rubber bullets at people's face, you know, just, it almost looks to me like they're trying to start that civil war because this is what's going to end up happening. Eventually the people are going to get pissed the fuck off to the point where they're going to fight back. And when they fight back, the police are going to be in trouble. And when the police are in trouble, anybody who supports the police, which at this point, we know who that is, they're going to take up arms to help them out. And then you're going to have a full on war. That's what they're trying to do. That is what I'm hoping doesn't happen because when you look back at history, you want our future to look at these guys as the fucking assholes. We did everything in our power to be peaceful, to be nonviolent. I mean, yeah, there was some violence. But that's going to happen when you've dealt with over 400 years of oppression. I've heard heard this a lot everywhere. I'm quite frankly, I'm surprised it hasn't, you know, popped off sooner. You know, it's just. It's the fact that it takes a death to start something like this. You know what I mean? But that's, that's the problem. It shouldn't have had, I'm not even talking about the protests. I'm looking at, the change that's happening because of the protests. It shouldn't have even happened to take George Floyd, Trayvon. Ma- it shouldn't have. It shouldn't have got to that point. You know, black people being killed for nothing. For nothing. Most of the time, mistaken identity. And I think anybody who makes false calls that turns into one of these unarmed black men and women, because that's happening too. If it results in the death, they should be held accountable too. Uh, Just really quick, today is Brianna's birthday. So happy birthday to her and rest in peace. Happy birthday. She should be here for this fucking birthday. It'll be she'll be twenty seven today. In her sleep. 
You know, and that shit's so fucking crazy because it's like, it's like, dude, you're going in someone's home. The wrong home. Raiding. Yeah, no, I mean, I get that. But I mean, you're going in someone's home. You should be more diligent on where you're going, where it is, and shit like that. Like, you should call back at least. Like, there should be some kind of due process before you start kicking the fucking door in. You get what I'm saying? Before they start shooting. Like, even before that point. Like, when they're, like, before they kick the door in, because I feel like the type of, I I don't know where they were. Uh, Like, not at all. And I don't, I've never been to Louisville. I've never even, none of that shit. I've never been to Kentucky at all. But my thing is, I feel like if the area they stayed in was predominantly black, I feel like they just didn't give a fuck. And whoever's house they came in, it was just more like a mistake type situation. It was like, oh, oh, well. You know what I mean? It's like most of them's fucking goddamn mindset. It's like, oh, well, fuck it. You know what I mean? And then dude's still in fucking jail. Like, how the fuck is the, you got the wrong dude in jail. You kill his fucking girl. And, like, he has to sit in jail and deal with all of that fucking pain and anguish and all that bullshit. You know what I mean? You fucking take somebody's fucking daughter off the earth. And you went in the wrong fucking house, bro. Like, to be all the way honest with you, that's one of the times you should go straight biblical or fucking Middle Eastern. You got to kill them motherfuckers. That's just my opinion. I don't think y'all should fucking jump on that one. But all of them motherfuckers that went up in there, they got to get it. Like, to be honest with you, the government or the fucking state, they got to take them out. You got to give them the death penalty. Like, you didn't do your due diligence. You're supposed to protect and serve, which is on all of the fucking cars. You have a whole fucking goddamn sworn oath that you're supposed to fucking goddamn do, and you don't do that shit, and then you kill somebody? That one was in ROTC. Like, you get what I'm saying? Like, like, come on, bro. Like... Why don't y'all talk, please? Yeah, so the uh, the boyfriend, he's actually out. Uh, they dropped the charges on him for now. So at least he's out. But, I mean, I don't blame him for shooting back. You coming in my house and not knowing who it is, then, of course, I'm an open fire. I'm pretty sure so you coming in unannounced in the middle of the night, then, pretty hey. sure you're well within your right to, to defend yourself, defend your home. Yeah, absolutely. Or, you know yeah. what I mean? Like, but that's that's where it comes to the problem is – the double standard. Somebody comes into a white person's house, they shoot. Oh, it was within their right. Black man does it, he gets arrested. Why? Mm-hmm. Legally purchased firearm under his name. They were going into his house. He had every right to defend himself. Why the fuck is he getting arrested? It's just, and then when you compare the protests, white people were protesting for fucking haircuts, bro. Bringing AR-15s to the state capitol for haircuts. Where the Not fuck bad. were the riot police then? Nowhere to be I think, seen. I think, I think, I think, I think, if I'm not mistaken, Trump also applauded them for being peaceful protesting. Yeah, you remember that, and then come and then call 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 protesters thugs now. Yep. Yep. What kind of shit is that? That's our president. That is this our king? This our leader? No, this our leader? no, no. Don't give him that. My, he ain't my leader. Yeah, <laughs> he ain't my leader. I'm just out of them all. I'm trying to ask you: Is this supposed to be the man that's supposed to lead our nation? This is the man yeah. that we voted. Mm-hmm. I hear y'all, but at the same time, people, foreign people ain't gonna, they ain't gonna see it that way. They just gonna see us as being American. You get what I'm saying? And that's bro. really what it is, bro. And he our face. He our face of America right now. So they look at all of us, even though we didn't probably didn't vote for him, they look at all of us like we stupid. They well, look you know at what? all of us like him. We didn't but, go into the bunker when people were protesting with ARs. But like that much. Things. This is what makes it a little bit different. Just a little bit different. All across the country, there's some form of protest going on. All 50 states. 18 other countries. 
other countries. People, people don't live here. Don't have to deal with none of this. Don't have to deal with Trump. Don't have. They're standing with us. So I honestly do believe they know that it's not the American people, the real American people. Yeah. They know who the real problem is. And that's what everybody's fighting against. You know, that's what we're all protesting against. It's, it, it honestly pisses me off that we're still fighting a fight that our parents and our grandparents fought against still to this day. We haven't learned. Churchill said it best. Those who don't learn from history are doomed to repeat it. Why is it so difficult to learn from history? Why is it so difficult to learn that what happened to the protesters in Selma, Alabama, getting hosed down with attack dogs on them, why couldn't those images in our history books throughout our entire lives, how come those images still aren't resonating with the general public? What's going on? That's why I say you blame the parents. You have parents who come from racist parents, whose parents before that just as racist. The it never gets cut. It continues to get passed on, and most of them live in these rural areas by themselves, secluded. These these you know two thousand you know person population towns you know, white towns and stuff like that, that are, they count as their own counties, basically. You know, so when you're coming election time, you know, the electoral college, the way that's fucking been rigged since it came into existence, you can read the history on that one too. There's a reason why the electoral college is there and it has nothing to do with making it fair for the vote. You know, you see all of this, and all of it gets passed down throughout time. Now, obviously, when I have children, teaching them, you know, obviously when you look at my family, we have we have everything. We have everything in our family. Black, white, you know, Hispanic. I think I have a Middle Eastern, you know, uh, cousin-in-law or something like that somewhere. You just, you have, dip, it. that was what's supposed to make America, you know, quote unquote, great. The melting pot, the, the different ideas from all different walks of life, all different parts of the world coming together to make, you know, for one goal to be, you know, the best in the world. Yet we still have a systemically racist you know law enforcement basically hasn't changed you know since the 60s they're they say the police are trained not really okay you and i had this conversation six weeks that ain't enough that ain't enough if military has to take months in training before they even see the battlefield. Why is being a police officer so different? I think in San Jose, I think in San Jose, their, their police academy or whatever is 26 weeks. They changed it. That was just recent. So what was it before? Like, uh, it was was it six like, weeks. The six yeah, week minimum. Was, yeah, for like the sheriffs, the the, the sheriff uh, for the, the the corrections program too. The, the corrections yeah. program too is actually longer than the police. Being an actual police officer. Yeah, I think the schooling is definitely some, and they didn't need to do you know more legitimate background checks. They need to get rid of a lot of these officers that have, you know, a shit ton of complaints of excessive. There's a lot of them out there. I saw another office. They're pulled up a thing on an offer. 71. 71 cases to where this guy was being accused of excessive force. 71 complaints. He still has a time before he kills somebody. 
talking about the dude that uh that killed George Floyd. George Floyd. No, he had thirteen. Uh, he had thirteen, and and uh, and another shooting incident. I think in two thousand eight. He worked with George at a bar. They both were security guards. Yeah. That was so you know, was you know that was almost premeditated. <laughs> oh, I know. It's not like he didn't know the guy. There's yeah. no, there's no possible way you can have a motherfucker look dead on Stephen Jackson in your fucking place and you don't notice. Yeah, exactly. Dead ass. At a, at a seventeen dead years. Ass. Yeah. Like, there's more to this story that we just ain't hearing, but there, there got to be some, something, something else involved in this. Hey man, the uh, internet is undefeated when it comes to fact checking, bro. Mm-hmm. I tell you that much. It's yeah. bound to come out sooner or later. It will be found out. Oh, yeah. It will be found. They say, Everything will they be say what's done in the dark will always find a way to shine, bro. That J. Cole quote stick. I swear to God. <laughs> All these people are getting exposed again. Again. You know, it's just. Right now, the change that's happening, in my opinion, is good. The fact that it has to get to these types of points, I wish it wouldn't. I wish I would have never had to see any of this in my lifetime. Honestly, mm-hmm. I should have mm-hmm. only had to. I should have only had to read about it in history books and go, "Damn, we learned from that. That's crazy. We're a Too lot much, better man. than what we were." Right. We're right where we were in 1965. They just replaced dogs. Replaced dogs with rubber bullets and mace. And team gas. And for no reason. Peaceful oh. protesters are getting this. There's armored, armored armored police vehicles too. I've never seen no a uh, police Humvee in person before. Just, well, they, have, they have police Tesla cars. Like, they're militarized. They're, they're completely money. militarized. Yeah. I know about the, the Teslas. I'm talking about the like Military, yeah, they leave coming with tanks and shit. I'm like, what the fuck? That's the police? Yeah. That's, That's my police? point. My point of saying is if they're getting if they're getting like flashy shit, they definitely got that military fucking bullshit trying to be ready for war. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. They definitely did they did that first. And oh, then yeah. they got Teslas. Oh, we gonna we gonna make it look like, you know what I mean? But nah, they got them shit, they got them battle cruisers in the motherfuckers a long time ago. Mm-hmm. That's what fucking shit, bro. It's just frustrating, man. Um, I, I, I keep saying that word because, like, the, Maddox, you, you, you work with my wife. Mm-hmm. She worries. She worries about me because you've seen my Facebook photo. I have no problem going at anybody. Mm-hmm. No problem going at anybody. Mm-hmm. Wearing that mask at work, <laughs> I knew it was going to happen, but it was just, in a way, it kind of gave me a small taste of what people look like, how they look at a black man when he first walks into a room. Oh, yeah. It's small. To, I'm, I'm, I'm not getting it all week I, long with my mask on. Trust I'm me. Not, I know. I'm <laughs> not saying. I'm not saying it was exactly the same. I'm just saying it was a small taste because I had my mm-hmm. mask, Black Lives Matter, plastered all. In some places, I got thank yous. I got my you know, shaking people's hands. I even got to talk with somebody, seventy-five year old black lady who marched over in Alabama during the civil rights. And I also got the other reactions. <laughs> the, the, the silent, oh, you're one of those mm-hmm. types of reactions. <laughs> like, and my boss, he's okay with it. I didn't clear it with him. Shouldn't have to. Exactly. First time, first, the first day I walked, today was my second day with it on. Yesterday, I first walked in with it, and he looked at me, and he's like, I have no problem with you wearing it. Just as long as you know 
the possibilities that could happen with you wearing it. I was like, oh, I know. And then I'm completely prepared for it. Because I was like, I'm sick of this shit. I want these people to feel uncomfortable. They should. Mm -hmm. They should feel uncomfortable because all this is bullshit. Just, bro, I, I shit you not, it makes my fucking blood boil. And I look at my wife and I go, you know what? To some people, she looks black. She's Portuguese. But she, with the curly hair, the darker skin, to an ignorant ass white person, she could look black. I get that. That makes me fear for her sometimes. I know she worries about me. I, she shouldn't. I, but I worry about her too. I worry about everybody. Because, again, I can't say that I can relate. But I'm here to listen and I'm here to help in any way that I possibly can. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Um, we're in college. Because uh, you remember I was living at Osmo's house, right? Yeah. At the time. So we're in college spring semester. I had a situation where I could have potentially died too. I got a fucking arrested. I uh, got fucking arrested for walking from after the club. Like, I'm, I'm going to give you the story. So Pretty much, uh, I, was, I went back home for my mom's birthday, um, and then I went out with my friends and shit, because her birthday was in the week. I went out on the weekend, like, before I left. Uh, after the club and shit, you know how they police try to clear the streets, tell everybody to go home, no loitering and shit. Cool. I'm walking, you know, walking just during season. Well, it's not during season, during spring. So um, I probably had practice, like, the week before, before I came home. So I was probably tired of shit. That was during double days and shit. So um, I was tired. Like, you know what I mean? Body's tired. It's like, this is my only kind of recovery or whatever the fuck. And I've been drinking. So, you know, all that shit just on me. You know what I mean? Yeah. So I'm walking. Like, it's not like I'm, like, trying to be a dick or nothing. I'm walking slow because my knees are hurting. This cop comes up. He's 6'5". You know, white guy. Uh, he's, like, telling me to hurry up. But my friend's walking with me because, you know, it's four of us. So one of them came back to walk with me and they walk in pairs. You know what I mean? Um, he's just walking with me and shit. So he knows the whole situation. So um, he's rushing me, rushing me, rushing me and shit. I'm like, I'm walking. Like, I'm not, not trying to be a dick. I play football. You know what I mean? I didn't specify what school. I didn't specify what city. I was just like... I play football, my body's beat up. Like, that's just the situation. Like, I'm still walking, you know what I mean? Uh, he was like, oh yeah, it's like, uh, I never even told him I was in college. You know what I mean? He just basically just started talking to us like we we never even graduated high school. Like, we never even got no education. Like, like we're just ignorant fucks, bro. Like, I promise you, it's, the story's gonna get worse, I promise you. So he's just talking to us like that. And I'm just like, I tell him, I'm like, Yo, all you need is a fucking high school diploma in six weeks, and here goes your gun and your badge. So congratulations, sir. And it went downhill from there, like completely downhill. So uh, we get about to the corner to turn into the parking lot. Uh, before we even got to the parking lot, like we crossed the street before we even got to there, it's three cops now. So it was him who's six five. Cause once I said that to him, he was like, "Yeah, I went to Nebraska. I played D. I played D, uh, DN or D tackle one of the motherfuckers." I was like, "Okay, whatever the fuck. I, I don't give a shit." I didn't even respond to that. So before we even got to the parking lot, it's three cops. Um, next thing you know, they're just they're harassing us, doing all this shit because we just met back up with the my other friends. You know what I mean? So all four of us are walking now. They pointed me out out of all them all out of everybody and just start fucking with me. It's a whole parking lot full of people. They're only fucking with me. Walking, walking. One of my friends like snap, cause they, they, he sees it. Like he sees the whole situation. 
he snaps and starts running towards the police. Before he did that, like before he even snaps, pepper spray. They have a pepper spray, they're just spraying this shit, all this bullshit. So my friend snaps, he fucking runs at the police. My other friend like scoops him, like damn near like form tackled his ass and put him on his shoulder and like just carries him to the car. Like, no, nah, we ain't going out like that. Like if you do that, they're going to shoot us, guaranteed. You know what I mean? Um, so I, I haven't stopped walking the whole time, bro. Like I'm still walking the same pace, all this shit. But I mean, Mace and shit like that. It's like, I'm kind of fucked up now. I'm like, what the fuck? You know what I mean? Now I'm talking out loud. Like, it's like, all oh, you motherfuckers got all these fucking gadgets like Batman and you fucking with people and shit like that. Like, I'm saying this shit now. Um, I'll say I probably walk maybe 10 more paces and it's eight cops around me. Bro, when I tell you I was about four feet from my friend's car before I got tased the first time. They're like, you're going to jail. I'm like, for what? Tased me the first time. I didn't feel that shit. I guess that was the liquor and adrenaline because I was pissed and I was like controlling my anger. Got tased the first time. He's like, get on the ground, get on the ground. Tased me the second time. Body locks up, I go down. He's like, yeah, you're crying like a little bitch now, huh? I said, no, nah, fuck you. I'm good. You know what I mean? Straight like that. I know I'm going to jail. I'm on the ground now. Like, it's eight cops around me. I saw the cop that tased me. He's jumping, like, doing agility drills and shit before he even tased me. It was like a whole thing where it's like, you, as soon as this cop found out, like, I played football, he saw my young face because I didn't have a full beard. Like, you know what I mean? He saw my young face. He just used conductive reasoning. This motherfucker's in college. Let's fuck up his life type situation. And I'm, I'm literally on the ground looking at my friend's car. Like, I'm looking at the car like, what the fuck? Like, how am I going to jail for some shit? I didn't commit a crime. I didn't do anything. I wasn't loitering. I wasn't fucking goddamn attacking the motherfuckers. They tried to give me two felony charges. They tried to give me two felony charges and a misdemeanor. Bro, I'm telling you, bro, like, I swear to you, I just told you the whole story. I can call all four of my friends, I mean, all three of my friends that were there right now, and they would tell you the same fucking story. I didn't do shit. I was walking to the car. Promise you, tried to give me two felony charges. I hired a lawyer. All I got was a misdemeanor, and I had to do the fucking goddamn prevention program, the first offenders prevention program through Salvation Army. And I did community service and pay restitution for walking to the car. That shit pissed me off. The even fact they day. even gave you that, bro. Misdemeanor for what? Like the the felony charge was threatening threatening the peace officer. Uh, the second one was uh, they said I was evading them. That was the second one. I was evading them, and the misdemeanor was disturbing the peace. Oh, wow. All right. It, That's when we were at City. So you were at City at that time. When I tell you when that whole situation with Connor went, went off, like, he didn't understand what I was going through mentally. So when he did all that shit to me, that's why when I had that talk with Swanee, that's why I was good. That's why I fuck with Swanee. Anytime I see Swanee, he fucks with me because he knew. I told Swanee what I was going through, and he kind of understood like, I don't fuck with Carlton at all, bro. At all. Because I know Swanee told him. I know Swanee told him. He still act like a fucking asshole. I saw this motherfucker before Osh closed right down the street from Silver Creek. Um, I saw Carlton. He parked his fucking bike right in front of this motherfucker. No, we were at Safeway. It's next door. Uh, we're at Safeway. He parked his bike. He saw me first. Didn't say shit. I thought I dropped something, I looked back, and there's this motherfucker standing there with his bike right there by the door. I was like, hey, what's up, Carlton? He didn't say shit to me, bro. He looked at me like I fucking, he didn't know me at all. It's like, Probably motherfucker, I just. No, fuck him, like completely. That's why, honestly, bro, not saying that it was a good thing, but 
a part of me, a part of me was kind of glad this funeral didn't go down because I would have saw that motherfucker again and it wouldn't have been a good thing, bro. It wouldn't have been a good thing because I'd have had a lot of questions. As an adult, a grown man now, yeah. I'd have had a lot of questions for you, man. Like, why the fuck did you, first off, why did you leave me out there in the wilderness by myself when you know I'm from out of state? You got all these kids that came from the Bay. You help out more than you help people that you don't got recruited from out of state. Then you throw three more motherfuckers from out of state on me, and then you make it seem like I'm a fucking asshole. Steve, Javon, and motherfucking Alfred. He threw all three of the motherfuckers on me fresh from high school. The only <clears> reason why Keith and fucking Irvin got that apartment was because of me. I got that apartment that they were staying in over there off of Gartner. I got that apartment. And I had moved out and moved to Mike house. You see what I'm saying? I moved to Mike house. I had to give up the place because I had to give my moms the money. I had my rent money. My moms needed for her place in Florida because we had a situation. So I gave her my rent money and I had to move to Mike house. And this fucker just threw me under the bus. That's why I said, it's, it's going to be a problem the next time I see him, bro. It's going to be a big problem. Whatever, it's just, again, it's like the majority of the people that I know, you know, who are black, have a story. At least one in their lifetime. Yeah, that's at, right. At a young age or at an adult age or what it, it at least one. And it's, I'm just happy, at least now, that it has gotten to the point, and maybe people being in quarantine, pent up, you know, there's a little bit of that frustration already there. And then this situation just Fuck that. No. Uh-uh. That's it. Even in quarantine, this is happening? No. No. Well, if you guys uh, watched the funeral yesterday, they said it best. They was like, you know, maybe the quarantine, maybe that was God's way. Because, like, most people, like, the sports is going on, this video would have played. You wouldn't have seen it over and over again. People would have been going about their lives doing different things. But because people were in quarantine... It's like you have to watch this over and over and over again. You know, now it shed a whole lot of light to a bunch of different situations. And it's like, you know, maybe it's God's way of saying, you know, you guys need to reevaluate a whole bunch of things because, you know, they ain't looking good. So, so here, I'm going to now make you watch what's really going on in this country. Mm -hmm. Yep. Mm -hmm. it, and oh, it's just I, a. I don't know. Oh, go ahead. I mean, I don't, I don't know if y'all are, you know, spiritual or religious or anything, but you know the whole Moses situation about, you know, letting my people go and then the plagues and shit like that. We could be going through a modern day plague right now with COVID. Them killing all these people and shit like that unnecessarily plague on the world. You know what I mean? And Again, a lot of innocent people that had nothing to do with that shit. One, Carl Anthony Towns' mom. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's a lot of people dealing with this shit because of the situation. And just like Matt Six just said, you know what I mean, from the funeral. <laughs> this is being publicized because of that. That had to happen for this to happen. You get what I'm saying? So that's just my take and my view on it. I yeah. mean, growing up religious in the Bible Belt of Florida, so whatever. <laughs> yeah, but <laughs> definitely the Bible Belt. <laughs> <laughs> but, but yeah, man, it's just, I'm glad people, I'm glad people are seeing it. As rough as it is to see, as as hard as it is to watch, because it, it gets really hard for me to watch sometimes. I just want to put my phone down, just no news, no nut, you know, just kind of get away, go watch, you know, some Netflix, watch comedy, you know, go do but whatever, just to kind of keep your spirits up just a little bit. But then you got to go right back. You right back to it, though. Yeah. <laughs> but, but it's like, it, it's, it's not because of a whole, 
it's not, an, I shouldn't say it's an obligation, but it is an obligation. Obviously, it's not something that you want to see, but you got to. Mm -hmm. You know, you have to see what's happening to fully understand. And even then, we're not going to fully understand. Because it's not happening to us. You know, people are going all, all around, you know, social media and everything. Well, they should be, you know, they shouldn't have to write. Who the fuck are you to tell them how they feel after this long of being held down? What white person has been pulled up? I, I'm sure there is, but I really want to see a statistic. How many white people have been pulled over and arrested and harassed for mistaken identity? Oh, they fit the description. How, ma how many times do you see that? Roof, bro. You know, it, it's just, you have, and my wife doesn't, you don't want to watch it all that much. You know, she's, she gets frustrated with it, you know, seeing it and everything like that, you know, but it's just, we have to, we have to, because we have to be able to relay what we've seen to our kids, to, you know, any other future gen nieces, nephews, anything else like that in the future, we have to be able to tell them what happened because history books aren't going to tell you everything. If we come to know that for sure, history books won't always tell you the full story. <laughs> you know, that's why you see a lot of stories that come out about certain situations years later because we have the technology and the information and all the, the tools that we need to be able to dig up that type of information. You know, and even then facts get twisted around, you know, all the fucking time. So if you observe the truth, you can be able to teach the truth. You know what I mean? So it's just, it's going to take, it, believe me, it's going to take a little bit longer to fully get through. There's change now. It's great. But it's got... It, this is something you just got to keep doing. The protests got to keep happening. Just because a few things change, don't let the protests stop because of that. Oh, yeah. yeah. Hey, 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 gas. I mean, it, took, it took us 400 years to get here. Yeah. How long is it going to take us to get out of it? So. Do, do you want to wait another 100 years? I, I, fuck, no, I don't think so. I ain't got 100 years in me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, would love, I would love to see in my lifetime everything become peaceful. Yeah. I would love to. Probabilities, am I going to see it? No, but maybe my kids will. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? You just, if not for me, do it for my kids, for my niece and nephew who are growing up during this time right now, having to kind of ba basically grow up a little faster than they have to mm -hmm. because of seeing everything that's going around. And I'll put some light on. I got a nine-year-old that is like terrified. He is running around with a frying pan to make sure nobody mess with him. No reason a nine-year-old should be running around trying to protect himself with a frying pan, you know? <laughs> but, that, that's another, but that's another thing though. Like, <laughs> Black parents having to basically teach their kids how to interact with a cop so they don't die. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah. My parents never. Even if you do, I mean, we interact and right and still dying. So it's like that's what I'm saying. I'm like, my parents never had to tell me something like that. Yeah, I, I have. I've never about. had to, you know, deal with something like that. So who the fuck am I? <laughs> You know, so that's just one thing. When people go, oh, they shouldn't riot. Well, they're, there's peacefully protesting. You're getting pissed off at that, too. What the fuck else you want them to do? Yeah. It's kind of like the white people's argument. There's no getting through it. Exactly. You're getting a fucking small taste of how it is for them on a daily basis. They don't like it because now it's starting to happen to them. The pressure's starting to happen to them. 
hey, you know, with pressure comes fucking diamonds. Or we we got a long way to go. It's going to take a little bit longer than we want. You know, we hope that it could, you know, end tomorrow, but that's not going to happen. We all need to get to the fucking polls in November because I'm tired of this shit. I'm tired of seeing this fucking man in the office destroying, you know, this fucking country from the inside out. The nerve of this man to go on national television and say, George Floyd would be proud of what's happening. No, <laughs> you don't get to mention George Floyd's name. You don't get no. to. And that man's name should never come out of his fucking mouth. This dude no, went in no. front of police. That big ass speech that he had telling him, oh yeah, rough him up a bit. Mm-hmm. And all the police, what was it Baltimore? Baltimore police notoriously yeah. are terrible. And all of them going, yeah, yeah. You're inciting this. The, the, cops, they feel they can do whatever the fuck they want because they know they got the big guy behind them. Mm-hmm. That's why they have that superiority complex right now. Again, not all of them. We'll make that. I feel like I have to make that very clear every time I say that because people nitpick nowadays. You know, not all of them, obviously, but a lot of them. A lot of them need to go. The reform, prison reform, law enforcement, the training that you need to have, all of that stuff needs to take place. Now, everyone has a background check. Any tattoo that you have on your body is getting examined. Where is the origin the origin of that tattoo? You do it for black people, you do it for Mexican people, you do it for Asian people. What tattoos associate what gang? What about the white boys with the fucking swastikas with the 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 South will rise again tattoos? You know, all did this you, Did you hear about the uh the fucking kids at Penn State with writing swastikas on their fucking body? Oh, oh yeah, out there, uh, Penn State, yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. my God, bro. I saw. I'm in this uh this Facebook group today that exposes people, and I man, you'd be surprised how many people were like. I mean, it's crazy, like how many people were like getting exposed right now. It's like I kind of don't even want to be in that group no more because it's like it just adds fuel to my fire. Like man, I'm ready to. Well, you know, you know, they it's just crazy, like seeing all these people. They have to be, they have to be exposed. And and I saw that too, and I posted that going like, how the fuck can somebody think this is funny? Mm-hmm. Your grandparents went to war against those motherfuckers. And you think it's funny to put a swastika on you? Mm-hmm. Oh, hey, for the, for the gram, what the fuck? What sort of twisted... You, I, first of all, how did you get to college? Because you obviously don't know your history. You don't know history at all. You know nothing when it comes to actual legitimate key information that you need to survive in this fucking world. You don't have it. How the hell did you get into Penn State? It, it, Becky's daughter almost got into USC the exact same way. It just my, my mom or my dad paid money to get me in. I paid for the building. It's just, it, it, it's absolutely insane. Just And the George Floyd challenge? Really? Yeah, man. Like, how Are how you, the fuck? What? You haven't seen those? That's what they're calling that shit? Yes. Yeah, they call it the George Floyd challenge, yes. They called it the George Floyd, <laughs> kneeling on somebody's neck and smiling up at the camera. With yep. both of them smiling, right? Yes. Yep. Fuck that. Bro. Fuck I, that. What the fuck? Some people just need their fucking ash whoop, bro. Mm-hmm. Real shit. <laughs> they just need to get the shit kicked out of them one time. Just they that's a that's a challenge. What? They made they made it an actual challenge. People are participating in this shit. 
I oh, thought people were just posting. I thought people were just being fucking ignorant, posting pictures. I didn't know that shit became it's fucking social. Woeful ignorance. Ignorance. It became a challenge. <laughs> it's what woeful is? ignorance, bro. Hey, I got a challenge for you. Knock a Nazi out. The knock a Nazi yeah. challenge. Let's get that. <laughs> no, I got a better one. Like Let's one get one. that. Let's <laughs> hashtag knock a Nazi challenge. How about that? We'll fucking get that shit, Trent. How will we do that shit? George I Floyd pity, challenge. I got a Kiss city that we can go through ass, first bro. to get that all cleared up. That's just. Hey, 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 roll, roll, roll. Hey, gotcha. Pow. Like, <laughs> this is just wild to me, bro. I'm, but, but you know what? One thing that I did see that I'm actually pretty happy about. They're taking down Confederate statues. More of them, at least. They started doing that a little while ago. But they took down the Robert E. Lee statue. We're down in, uh, where, where was that at when they got, was that one in Florida? It wasn't in yeah. Florida, was it? No, the, uh, Robert E. Lee was the Charleston, South Carolina uh, fucking riots. When all those no, 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 no. There was Georgia. another... There was another Robert E. Lee monument that just got. They, uh, yeah. ba uh, Baltimore took down four last night. Oh, oh, fuck. I didn't know they had that many there. Yeah, yeah. Maryland. They took down four. Maryland, bro. That, that, that's I mean, another thing that I never understood. These people were terrorists by all definitions. The, the Confederate States of america was a terrorist organization they seceded from the south or from the from the union all to ensure slavery we beat them and how much of a slap in the face is that to black people going yeah we fought for you to be free but we're still going to leave the monuments to remind you guys on a daily basis oh, that sorry. even though we beat these guys. They're okay. <laughs> They're all right to be remembered. Nah. Robert E. Lee, gone. Done. Shouldn't be, there should be no statues of that man. He'll be in history. It was going to be the history, the historical loser of the South. That's what he's going to be known for. Don't put that fucker on a pedestal. To be all the way honest with you, are you really surprised about any of this shit? Like Trump, Robert E. Lee, any of that shit? Thomas I Jefferson was money. I was never I surprised. He he I, was, I was never surprised about Trump from the beginning. From the very beginning, I've been calling that man an orange Hitler. I've been saying from the very beginning since he was starting to run, this man is going to cause some sort of civil war, civil unrest to where he's going to divide the whole... I'm... At the beginning, I hoped I was wrong. I knew I was right, but it was just it. It just brought out, and especially when I said the electoral college earlier in the show. Electoral college was not made to be fair. White people knew that they were outnumbered, or they were going to be outnumbered, so they divvied it up in a way. To where they can still have the advantage to get whoever they wanted in. See, the popular vote should be the only vote because that's the vote of the people. The popular vote is the vote of the people. The reason why people don't think that their vote counts anymore is because at the end of the day, the delegates are the ones who choose. Doesn't matter what the people voted, whatever that delegate wanted, or however much money the lobbyist put into his pocket to vote for, that's who they're gonna vote for. You know, so you get rid of the electoral college, you go purely popular vote. That's it. That's all that should matter, because it's the people who's voting them in. There shouldn't be, oh, this state, you get 20 points here and 10 points here and 20. No, 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 no. The whole population of the United States of America. We vote, whatever that final number is, whoever has the most votes, boom. That's who's in. No ifs, ands, buts, maybes, re We Oh, the electoral college. Da, 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 da. No, no. Popular vote, 
That's it. That's all it should be. But there are a lot of laws in this country that if you look on the historical reasonings why they came to be, to keep y'all down. Keep black people down. Keep minorities down. Mexicans. Hey, keep them all at this level while a white man gets to this level. That's how it's been. Yeah. I mean, if people want to actually know the fucking truth, that's the fucking truth. Read a history book. Read, read a book. Get informed. Because that's really what happened. So when we talk about change, we're not just talking about, you know, literal just police brutality. In my opinion, it should be more about just pro pro police brutality is a main thing in all of this. And it starts with that. The policing of the people definitely needs fucking work. Because we, we can't have unarmed citizens of this country who pay taxes just like everybody else who grind and work hard like everybody else, sometimes two jobs, sometimes three jobs, you know, to help, you know, pay for their kids or whatever. You're taking away kids' fathers, kids' mothers. That's vital to a, the growth of a child. Child needs his parents. Whether they're divorced or whatever, they still have them. They're still physically there. You need to have the father. You need to have the mother. You kill the fucking father, the kid grows up without that father figure to be able to set him right. You grow without the mother because she's dead. Child grows up without empathy, without any care, really. Not to say that men don't care or don't have empathy, but that's more of a natural, like if you look at biology, that's more natural of a female state. So for a child, they need to be able to have that tough love from the father, I'm not saying beat them, you know, or anything else like that, any abuse, but that be able to, to grow, to be able to withstand what comes to you, and then the nurturing of the mother. You need to be able to have both. And when you're killing one or the other, how do you think most of the children are going to grow up? with the survival mentality not the living mentality you live life you live life to be happy you know and i i saw it in this movie and this quote kind of got to me a little bit i don't know how y'all would feel about this but it said when slavery was over, black people already knew how to survive. Nobody ever taught them how to live. So I was just, I listened to that going, and this was a black man who said it. You know, going through all that, and I'm look, looking at this quote and I'm going, they, for all those years of slavery, they had only known to survive, to get through it. And then when they got out of slavery, they were still being held down, so they're still being survival mode. Instead of giving the equalities that they were promised, 40 acres and a mule, still my damn mule. you know, Instead of getting what they were promised, they were still kept down. So it continued to be survive, survive to get to the next point, survive to get to the, we have to survive so that our children can be able to be free. So many years of survival, you forget how to live. And I think that goes for everybody, to be honest. If everybody kind of grows up in a fucked up situation or kept down or something like that, it becomes survival mode. Now, I don't know how you guys feel about that that quote. I don't know if I explained it, you know, the right way. 
but it's just a proving point to show how long and how ridiculous it has been that black people have been treated this way, like oppressed in this way. You know what I mean? And to, to, and I've said it before, to say that they should protest this way, protest that way, whatever, you know, we're no one to talk. All these years of frustration, all these years of, you know, oppression and things like that. Hey, whatever you in your heart feel like you need to do to get your voice heard, by all means, man, do it. Do it. And I say, burn <laughs> them down. They got insurance anyway. <laughs> 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 well, for for the looters and rioters, I had thought about this. I'm like, why why are more police buildings and government buildings being like? Yeah, you know, I I get it, the anger, the frustration, but it's like, I feel like sometimes the wrong buildings are being targeted here. Mm -hmm. I mean, I can mm -hmm. give a fuck about a Target. That's a national <laughs> thing. They'll be, you know, Target don't even care. They came out with a statement. They're like, we don't we don't care about the you know. They got, the people, yeah. they got millions of people, yeah. They got millions of dollars backed up behind them. They exactly. don't give a damn about no target. But like yeah. the small mom and pop shops, you know, yeah. the ones that put all their life savings and stuff yeah. into it. You know, I, I I can't most of those guys are the ones who are just taking advantage of the situation. Yeah. Yeah. You know what I mean? Those are the ones who were and there's a whole lot of that going around too. Hey, well, you a guys lot hear of non non black people going tagging up, you know, things breaking windows and stuff like that. They don't understand that that's going to reflect on the protesters. Right. Mm -hmm. The racist white man will not look at that. There'll be a oh, see, look, they're breaking property too. They can't be peaceful. They can't do. That's all they're going to see. Did you guys hear about? The uh driving around uh handing out bricks to protesters mm -hmm. they had police dropping off pallets of them yep mm -hmm. to protect yeah. the okay it, it's how dumb do you think black people are, like, people are bro? that's the thing they're not not <laughs> like some of the some of the smartest people I know are 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 black, bro. It's just it. That's what I'm saying. And Dr. King it said it too. Like content of the character. I never judge anybody based on the color of their skin. But if you're an asshole, you're an asshole. Straight up, no matter what color you are. If you're a dickhead, you're a dickhead. If you're a good person, you're a good person. You know what I mean? That should be the, it shouldn't be the stereotypical type of stuff. You know, people shouldn't have to look at a black man and go, oh, is he going to steal? Is he going to do this? What's he going to do? Is he gonna... People shouldn't have to be worried about that. Nine times out of 10, they have nothing to worry about. Most of the times, it's 10 out of 10, they have nothing to worry about. You know, it's just, I don't know, man. It, it, that's what I'm saying. Like, we can do, there's a lot that we can do, and you're not going to please everybody. But as long as positive change comes out of all of it, I mean, if it works, then if the rioting's working, you know, Hey, do it. Peaceful protest is working. Do it. Looting? I'm still on the fence on the looting. I'm still on the because the looting to me, that's more of like a selfish thing. There's a cause here. 
there's something to be, you know, to be actually fought for. And you selfishly did something for your own personal gain. That's how I look at the looting. Rioting, I can understand, you know, that's going to happen, especially with a lot of anger and buildup. That's going to happen. The peaceful protests, I see that happening too. That's why Dr. King and Malcolm X worked. Both of their ways, you know, they kind of contradict. Malcolm X is more, you know, exactly. Malcolm X is more of a, we'll fight by back. Necessary. Yeah, by any means. You know, any so means. it's, you have that balance. Rioting works, peaceful works. And we're, like, put it this way, when, when, when people were peacefully protesting, marching, for example, they were getting hosed for marching. Malcolm X took the more radical approach of, yeah, protest. Let 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 our collective voices be heard, whether it be bashing businesses, you know what I mean? They can rebuild those shits back up. He got that he got that he got that notion where you're not gonna be heard unless you're hurt. So, so take it, it doesn't it doesn't involve just like peaceful protests. I'm not saying and I'm not siding with rioters all altogether. Of course there's exceptions. There's some people with their own agenda. And there's some people that are hurt taking it taking it out on everything. Yeah. That feel that the government stands for or the government supports. For example, Target Walmart. Or that supports the government, mm -hmm. vice versa. Like, what? It, like, I want to hear more from from. Like, I feel like I've been talking a little too fucking much. But I want to hear more from Kay. I want to hear from more from. Matt. I want to hear y'all's point of view. I can only say so much on my end. You know, I want to hear what y'all have to say about all this. Like, I really do. I know I can see you over there, Kay. Like, I just. <laughs> I see it. I see it in your eyes, bro. It's just, it, I let it out, bro. Just let it out. Let me know. If not anybody else, let me know. <laughs> Honestly, bro, I, I can't because it's going to get real Florida real fast. No, 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 no. I can't do that. I can't do that. Um, uh, one of y'all will go first. E message. One of y'all. That's it. I, 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 no, I'm. I'm not. I'm still gonna say something, but I just don't want to go first. All right. Go ahead, I'm message. Uh, like, I mean, either you, know, you say you now we've we've seen it all. It definitely needs to be a change. You know, I've dealt with it myself. Not as much as others. Uh, just up here in Rockland. You know, I live up here in Rockland, and it's you know predominantly white. And this was uh, some years ago. Bought a new car, didn't have the license plates in the front, getting off work, uh, coming home, get off the freeway, and my car pulls me over. Just me by myself, just me and this car in the middle of the night, get pulled out at gunpoint. No reason whatsoever. Coming home from work, uh, thrown on the ground. He was like, you know, where you get the car from? I'm like, the sticker is right here in the window. They got my name on it. I got my driver's license. Never been in trouble. No reason for this whatsoever. Then he was like, oh, you good to go. I'm like, well, no, you didn't even have to take me at the car at gunpoint. That was all unnecessary. For what? Yeah. What threat did I pose driving on the freeway, getting off the on-ramp? None whatsoever. So I get, you know, the people, you know, uh, rioting and, you know, protesting, the looting. I don't, you know, definitely agree with the looting. Cause it's just unnecessary. Like the cop, you know, there was a cop that got killed protecting his friend's store, shot this man over a TV for what? Like, what are you going to gain from that? You can't go sell this stuff. Cause I'm sure they are tracking all of this stuff. Yeah. You know, even Apple put out a statement, these phones y'all still in, <laughs> they can track these phones. So you going to go to jail for it. So now you just look stupid, <laughs> you know, stealing stuff. You guys stealing like cars out of a car lot. Like, you think they not yeah, in these cars? <laughs> I'm like, come on now. Hellcats like, and y'all just making like everybody look, yeah. Any yeah, grand like, cars. 
and it's just making you know it's making the positive things look bad because you know the news want to portray you know all they want to do is portray the looting and you know they're not trying to show the peaceful stuff they're trying yeah, to show you know the black people running through the store well i didn't see more videos of white people running through these stores dropping off bricks you know breaking windows than anything else but you know the news don't really want to you know and when the news does try to report it, you get these, you got these reporters out here getting pepper sprayed and shot with pellets and, you know, rubber bullets and all of this. And so it's just like, you know, enough is enough. Like, you know, it's, we've been doing this for 400 years. It ain't going to end overnight, but it got to start somewhere. Well, it's it's got to keep it moving. It's going to be a stressful and exhausting fight. Mm-hmm. That's for sure. But it's one that we got to be willing to do. Mm -hmm. And even at work, you know, just dealing with it. Like I have my mask on all week. You know, I can't breathe. And, uh, you know, nobody said nothing. You get the looks or whatever. And like, I'm a big dude. So ain't nobody going to say nothing to me anyway. So <laughs> I don't care about the job. You can say something if you want to. <laughs> you might not <laughs> like the reaction you're going to get. Um, but you know, even our captain, he stood behind us, you know, while we did it. And we you know we all wore black yesterday. And then after this whole thing yesterday, you know, somebody, a co-worker decided to open their mouth and say something negative about the whole thing. And I just had to leave, you know, they let the captain or whatever, but it's just like, you know, even, you know, we doing positive things and somebody still, you know, they still gonna have stuff to stay. So I didn't address it and like, you know, I'll let him deal with it. Cause if I address it, it's going to be a whole different situation. So <laughs> I'm just like, people just need to be educated. It's all, you know, I'm just going to take the time and I don't want to bash her. It's like, you know, I was like when I left yesterday, I'm like, Oh, I can't wait to get back to work so I can just confront her and say nothing. But I'm just going to use it as an educational tool and just educate her. Like, you know, the stuff you're saying, you need to learn the facts of what you're saying is what you're saying. First of all, ain't true. So just, we just got to educate these people. That's the thing. Some of them just don't want to be educated. They're so stuck in their ways, bro. That's just, but you know, the good thing about the protests and with change and with progress with all of that, those types of people eventually cease to exist. I saw today, I was going through Twitter, looking through, you know, countless videos that are being posted there. Well, I saw this little girl, little white girl, arguing with her parents. Mm -hmm. With her, it said on the caption, her racist point of view parents. Now, she is trying to educate her parents. Something <laughs> wrong with that picture, yeah. obviously. But, but the fact that with her, you know, she may not be able to sway her parents. But she knows that when she has kids later on, she'll be able to tell them the truth. And that's what I hope more keeps happening. Like these kids that are growing up with these parents actually learn the truth, know the truth, or, you know, educated or want to be educated enough to be able to speak, you know, without sounding like a fucking idiot, you know, they'll start breaking off from that. And like I said, it's not going to be, it's not going to happen overnight. This is something that's going to be a generational thing for sure, for it to completely go away. We can suppress it and get rid of it now, or like start to get rid of it now, you know, with more, you progressively get better in the change but you know it, it's a long journey but you know it's worth it in the end at least mm -hmm. um go ahead okay i was actually going to ask ea do you want to go first Okay. Um, I agree with some of your points. A few I disagree with. Um, 
Before I go there, I used to live in Rockland too, bro, and it's just like that. Oh, yeah. Just, <laughs> just, I promise you, I stay right off of Sunset. It's just like that. Oh, yeah. Oh, God. I, I, <laughs> I was at the Roseville Safeway right there off, uh, on the other side of the fucking bridge um, by the fucking, uh, what's over there? Sonic? Is that? No, Sonic is by Walmart. Mm -hmm. Shit, I ain't been up there in so many years, but you know what I'm, you know the area I mean, but, uh, yeah, yeah. But to your point, Josh, it can happen faster than generational just simply because the way social media has pretty much exposed a lot of shit and people are able to see it. It's so accessible now with your cell phones and how the internet is just super fast and all that stuff. Mm -hmm. I've been seeing a lot of things like the kid, uh, I'm not going to remember his last name. I remember his first name. His name is Mikey. Played basketball. He's like one of the top recruits in the state. I mean, not in the state, but in the country in high school. You know what I mean? He tweeted out. He said, going to an HBCU might not be that bad. Oh, man, yeah. That's probably one of the ways that you can get him. Uh, Taking away a lot of the NCAA, too. That's for sure. That brings them down, too. And at the same time, you can take a LaMelo ball route. To be honest with you, people were slandering that kid, but realistically, I didn't. I thought he did the, the best thing for him, being homeschooled and stuff like that and doing all that stuff. Because you got a dad like LaVar, I mean, bro, you got a marketing team. You get what I'm saying? Like, he did his own route. You know what I mean? Like, just being real. LaVar's got Talking here, we game brought the other half. You know what I'm saying? Your brother in the league. But that's not the point. Um, another thing that hit him, again, it can happen just that quick. Black people got to realize which we are coming together and actually trying to build something. Like as in black grocery stores, black gas stations, black clothing stores. You know what I'm saying? Uh, black owned damn near anything fucking butchers you know what i mean fucking goddamn oil refinery fucking companies all kind of shit which that's more of in your state but uh all those yeah. things you know what i'm saying all those things can help that process way faster it don't have to go generations it can honestly go in the next five years if people start coming together and doing that shit because dude i'm telling you like that shit can happen just like that. Like, it could. Just taking your money away from these motherfuckers and make them realize, like, fuck, these motherfuckers was working hard and spending their money on bullshit. Like, bro, I can tell you where I'm from. Motherfuckers are living in an apartment and have a fucking goddamn Lexus sitting on 24s. <laughs> yeah. Like, I'm just being real. Like, that's unnecessary money. That's frivolous money just spent on some bullshit. You could just bought a house or try to fucking get some land or start a business, you know what I'm saying? I'm not knocking them, because if that's what they want to do, that's what they want to do. You know what I'm saying? Like me, now, I, now I'm driving a piece of shit ass 98 Buick right now, bro. <laughs> I'm trying to get a, get a business going. Like, I'm just being honest. I'm I'm not trying to be on this fucking extra fucking bullshit, you know what I'm saying? Like, I'm, I'm on a whole nother plane, and I'm trying to fucking goddamn pass shit down. Like, I ain't with that fucking, you know what I'm saying? Just spending money trying to show out and shit like that. And it's like, I, I wear I wear my friend's clothing. Like, I'll spend money on that shit. Like, this right here. This is my boy's company right now. You know what I mean? He from Atlanta. You know what I mean? I, I met this motherfucker when uh my friend that I was walking with, with the whole rest shit, he got married in September. I was one of the groomsmen. And this guy that owned this company. <coughs> I'm like, bro, as soon as you drop that shit, let me know. I'll buy some shit. Bought this fucking jacket. You know what I'm saying? I wear what I'm accessible to based on my friends. It's like, I'm not finna sit here and go buy no Gucci shirt or no fucking, you know what I'm saying? That's not my style anyway. I'm tall as fuck, wear a size 16 shoe, bro. Like, you know what I'm <laughs> that's, where that's I a lot of Gucci material. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So I feel like we, we should just start pumping money into those type of businesses. You get what I'm saying? Like, yeah, they're smaller right now, but it's like we can grow the motherfuckers and actually compete with motherfuckers to win. 
people start trying to, you know what I'm saying, protecting our shit, understanding the the, uh, the economy and how economics work for real. Because that's really how we can fucking switch this shit up. Because these motherfuckers know money. Yeah. They know money. They, they live in money. They thrive in money. They wake up thinking about money. They go to sleep thinking about money. They dream about money. That's all they really give a fuck about. You mm -hmm. get what I mean? Just like I've seen, I forgot where the fuck I saw that, but basically they have higher interest rates for loans on black people because they think they're not going to be fucking diligent about their bills. Yeah. You get what I mean? And it's like that kind of shit right there. It's like, bro, you don't have to fucking goddamn, that was Killer Mike on fucking Undisputed with Skip and Shannon. That's where I saw that. Because uh, he was on there talking. That's where I saw it. But, uh, but yeah. Even Killer Mike show they got on Netflix. It's basically teaching motherfuckers how to be self-sufficient and understand about camaraderie within, again, not trying to make it race uh, uh, based, but again, within your race. Because honestly, bro, other races like Mexicans, like Asians, they fucking come together, bro. It's like, you've been out here in the Bay Area for dumb long. You live in Sac now, but you've been in the Bay Area for dumb long and you see little Saigon. The east side of San Jose, which that's where you went to high school at. You yeah. know, it's like you see, you see how they come together. You see how they come together. Like, bro, I, Jesse, for instance, you get what I'm saying? Jesse got his car, he got his uh the Honda he got from his fucking grandfather. You get what I'm saying? His people hooked him up with a job at the fucking flea market when he was at City. You get what I'm saying? Jesse didn't know no fucking Spanish at that time. He was just up there trying to fucking figure it out. But they hired him because he's Mexican. It's quick to hire. You know what I'm saying? He's he got everybody else in because, again, Jesse is a good worker. Not saying he's not. Mm -hmm. But having that fucking goddamn descent, you know what I'm saying? That helps you out a lot faster, especially in that area. Yeah. You know what I mean? So that's just more what it is. Like, black people have to understand that. Like, I ain't going to say we're not. We are learning that. But we got to come to that realization faster so we can actually do some things. Because, again, I'm with the protests. I'm with all this other stuff. You know what I'm saying? Not with the looting, because I ain't, I ain't with the stealing shit. I'm too big to steal my goddamn self. They look <laughs> crazy as soon as I walk in the door, even right. when I got a knock. That's why I was like, when I went to the bank for my job, because again, my job, I can't really step out of character, so I got to be PC 1,000% of the time. You know what I'm saying? I'm the property manager. You know what I mean? So I can't really do all that shit. But when I go to the bank, I went in the bank one time with my shades on, with the mask and shades on. They thought I was from Robert's shit. Security was, he, he left his post at the door letting customers in and follow me. I got a bank, a fucking bank bag in my hand that has your bank's name on it. I got my name badge on with my fucking initials and my last name. Like, why the fuck would I sit here and come rob a bank? This happened recently? Bro, this was this, fucking two days ago. What the like we're in quarantine, of course people are wearing masks. Like what the fuck? I thought people would be over the wearing mask part at this point, but fuck. Shades on too. That that combination. You get what I'm saying? Like if I was trying to find my identity, it's like, bro, you you literally can fucking count on one hand how many fucking people I seen close to my in three months. Like that's that's the crazy shit about this. So that's that's more of what I'm saying. It's like it ain't, it's not new to me again. Florida. They call Florida crazy, but it's like the, the shit that people don't understand, Florida man, is mostly this color. Like, let me just be honest with you. You don't really catch Florida man out here like this doing their thing. You get what I'm saying? Yeah. He's like those fucking cannibals most of the time. Just being honest. So it's like it's a whole thing. It's like we get a stigma for somebody else's fucking doing. And yeah. they don't fool the mind different because of the standing the ground bullshit yeah no it, it seems to be that way like when one person does something wrong you know you seem to to group basically the entirety like almost of like somebody's you know when people you know talking about like terrorism like muslims and stuff like that one muslim goes and blows himself up they think all muslims are like that when it's not even a third of their population that's like that yeah. Yeah. But what I what I'm saying, like it in when it comes to where the white people need to start educating themselves, it's just and 
And what about the mass shooters? They got those guys. Jacksonville, fucking, uh, like I said earlier, Dylan Roof, fuck him completely. And yeah. South Carolina, like yeah. all these motherfuckers. Boy, oh my god. But they, but here's the thing, they took them in peacefully. They took them alive. They took, took them that alive. That Burger King, get that. Took Dylan Roof to Burger King and gave him a fucking crown. <laughs> like what the fuck, bro? Do you? <laughs> When I was working at Stanford, do you remember that fucking guy on the swim team that raped that girl? Yeah. And got off because they were like, oh, it will fuck up his trajectory in life. Bro, do you not understand I wanted to quit? The girl wasn't even black. I wanted to quit so badly, bro. I'm not lying to you. I needed the money. I did not quit. I stayed another two years, but I wanted to quit so badly, bro. Oh, my gosh, that pissed me off so, so much. That's that's where you get that double standard, you know, the you give a black man and a white man the same crime, the black man will get the maximum penalty fucking every time. Yep. Every time. And white man will maybe slap on the wrist, maybe a couple months in probation. You know, oh, it's just, it, it, it's, and I think that when the justice system, especially, that that's where I think most of the, it's coming Police brutality, obviously, the justice system has always been fucked. Like it, it, if you're even if you're an innocent black man, your chances of going into that and getting called guilty are much higher than it would for a white person. You know, just look at the Central Park Five. You know, just look what happened to that. You have countless black men who are innocent who are now getting released from jail because. Again, the whole mistaken identity, he fit the description type bullshit. You know, you never you never see that with, with white people. You never see that argument with white people. You know, they fit the description type, the mistaken identity. You know, that you, you don't get that. You see, it's all, what the justice system needs to do is they need to start looking from within going, okay, who do we have here that's notoriously been, you know, just, when it comes to judges, pro I know prosecutors are meant to put you in jail, but and lawyers in general, you know, will lie to you straight to your face for the you know a good amount of them. Defense lawyers, I think once things start to become like a level playing field, more for the truth. You know what I mean? The defense team is fighting for the truth. The prosecution is fighting for the truth, but not in a malicious way. You know what I'm saying? It's just got to. And then on top of that, I mean, I can't stress this enough. We all have to go vote in November. We all have to. This isn't a, this isn't a matter of, this literally could be a matter of life and death at this point. If, like, honestly, because they're both racist. And, and if we don't vote independent for the, uh, I forgot who Mike told me what her name was. Mike Osborne told me what her name was. She's that uh, libertarian, isn't she? Yeah, he put me on game. He put me on game because I didn't know. I didn't know she was still running or whatever the fuck. I didn't know nothing about her. See, but, I uh, look at it, I, I saw it this way. Because I, I had thought about that too, third party. But the problem when it goes into this is if you vote third party, it's still giving Trump a higher chance. No, for sure. You know, so it's, that's why it's like, you want to vote third party, yes, but no, I feel not. like we should start looking at third party options once we just get Trump the fuck out. Like, once right. we get him out, Biden, I think we can deal with a lot easier. I think his temper, yeah, he, you know, these pretty much a creep he's a little bit of a weirdo you know i'm not gonna lie you know he, he's got some shit you know he has says some shit that you know obviously but i think his temperament um the way he deals with situations and you know that he's gonna have obama going don't fucking make me look bad you know just, just like, but you know, i feel like that's why obama those uh 
addresses because he fair he, he, he we all know Trump fails to address the nation when he when you know what I mean the nation needs to hear them the most. Yeah. Obama doesn't have to do that. Obama doesn't have to address the nation, really. If a, if Obama does the nation, okay, hold on, hold on. Just, just going off the cycle of former presidents. I don't want. I, I want to. I want to know where W is on this situation. I want to know where even Clinton, all, all the way back up to Clinton. I want to know what their stance as former presidents on this. We have a stance which is. I think Jimmy Carter came out just recently. Yeah, I think uh, Bush came out and told him basically, like, you need to, you know, watch what you're saying. I know Bush said something, but I haven't heard from Clinton. And Clinton is hard because he's got that <laughs> Epstein, he's got that Epstein thing coming over his head. Right yeah, now. <laughs> he, he's got that whole. He, I think right now is a good time for Bill to just lay low. <laughs> just, just, just stay out of sight, out of mind for right now. You know, that's what I said. Jimmy Carter came out. He said some good things. Um, Obama obviously is trying to do his thing. And you, I see a lot of people. Look, we all know Obama wasn't, you know, a saint. Okay, no president has been. Okay, Obama did some bad shit. He did a lot of good shit. I don't remember him getting you know, fucking subpoenaed or being, you know, accused of rape, you know, allegations. Or I don't remember any of that happening with him. One, I think Michelle would have killed him if it happened, you know, but two, it, it just, he wasn't perfect, but he was a hell of a lot better than this. Hell of a lot better than this. He, he was compassionate. He had empathy. He want. He did so much to try and work both sides. Yeah. Sometimes it fault. Sometimes he fell a little far too far helping out the right. Sometimes he fell a little too far helping off the left. He's a fucking human. He makes mistakes. Shit happens. Not every decision that he's going to make is pop, is going to be popular, especially because he's the first black president. You think you look how fucking bad the Republicans wanted him out of office. They did everything in their power to get him out of office. You know, but he came in, won two terms, did his thing. He did great things for this country. But then great. for him to go to Trump, it's whoo, man. I think Hillary was the wor worst possible person you could have put with everything that Hillary has done, it was kind of one of, I, that's why I kind of hated that argument, lesser of two evils, although it was kind of a true thing, you know, lesser of two evils, whatever. Obviously, Hillary was the lesser of two evils, but that's neither here nor there at this point. You, yep. But right now, we're in a time where we have a president who's doing everything in his power to become Hitler. He, he wants to be able to dictate the country. He wants to declare martial law before, before the election happens because he, he probably knows he's not going to win. So that way he can keep the purpose power. Exactly. With martial law, there is no election. Everything's shut down. Everything's locked down. And the final word is the president. So he's trying to, at this point, why do you think they're planting the bricks? He's finding anything that he possibly can to be able to call that bell. He, he can't do it yet because they're not giving him a reason. There's no reason for him to do it. You know, he's trying to get military into those, you know, protests. The governors are shutting it down. But once he, he does, you know, martial law, you know, at this point, I want to know what the fuck Congress is doing. I want to know what they're doing right now. There's a lot of highlights on what, you know, Trump is doing, the protests, everything. I want to know what the congressmen and women on both sides 
are doing to because you're not hearing a whole lot. You're hearing a couple of Republicans and stuff denouncing Trump and all this other kind of stuff. I I'm not happy with just one or two. I want to hear the entire Republican side going, look, we're fucking wrong. Kind of like the what the NFL did. You know, we were wrong. You know, we shouldn't have put this guy in. He has tarnished our party. Which, by the way, I don't think there should be a party because that just gives the people a reason for a divide to choose a side type of thing. It shouldn't be a Republican or a Democrat. It should just be who has the best views, who has the best ideas, and who can bring the people together. That's what it should be. It shouldn't have to be Republican or Democrat or this, 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 because it gives you a side to choose. You know, so... Look, there's a lot of things that we can do as a nation. Individually, those who, and I want to, I want to say this clearly and as best as I can. Individually, for non-black people. Listen, yes, but got to stand with them. My brother just sent me a video of Trump mocking uh, George Floyd. I didn't get to see that, but my brother literally just sent it to me right now. Mocking? Hold on. Uh, yeah, uh, there was a video on YouTube that I he was like talking about. I can't breathe. I can't breathe. Yeah. I saw that the uh, other day. How do you, how do you, what the fuck was that? That was Orange Hitler. Going from, I think George Floyd would be proud to, I can't Mm -hmm. I can't do it. But that's what he's doing. That that's, that's the plan. What the f- what a f- what time period am I in right now? He pulls the fuck. That's the fucked up shit about this man. Man, that nigga pulls his fuck just simply because motherfucker dodged a damn draft his goddamn self. Pussy ass motherfucker don't want to fight. Nothing like that shit, man. That shit. What? Uh, what? Uh, what? Uh, shit. And wild. Like I, I don't even know what to say right now, bro. I'm, I'm, I'm. What does how that do mean? What does that mean? Follow somebody like that. Like, how can you justify something like that? They just killed a man who left a daughter. 
behind now. Six-year-old daughter screaming, Daddy changed the world. How the fuck do you follow somebody like that? I don't get it. Nobody I really, accountable. That's why we got to expose them. But that's the thing. I And I put it before. The keyboard trolls. The people who just sit there and... and Talk a whole bunch of shit, but when you want to expose, when you want to talk, I I have you know family members and stuff like that who voted for Trump and stuff like that. I want to talk to them about it. Hey, why? Just help me understand why they never can. Whether it's family, whether it's friends, whether it's a stranger, they can never justify legitimately why the fuck they put this man in office. Let me tell you, they all. Everybody I talk to about that bullshit, like they all got the same motherfucker got the uh, reason. Because he speak his mind. Got nothing to do with politics. They got nothing to do with no bullshit. Because he speak his mind. Like talking about like they don't trust Hillary and shit like that. Like boy, I trust Hillary over Trump any day. Like, like be all the way honest with you. Like Y'all think about the nineties, like when he did that whole Monica Lewinsky shit thing. Like their daughter was young, you know what I'm saying? So she kept her fucking, she kept their family together. You know what I'm saying? Like a person that I'd have been out. If I was a female and I was killer, I'd have been out. You know what I'm saying? But that's just me though. Like I, 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 don't, I personally, my mindset don't condone that kind of fuck shit. You know what I'm saying? But at the same time, like. At the same time, like, dealing with what we got to deal with right now, like, honestly, bro, like, when that shit came about, I mean, I made a funny post about it or whatever, like, oh, I was running for president and all that bullshit, but, like, realistically, bro, like... At, at, he speaks his mind. At what point does speaking your mind go wrong, though? When it doesn't benefit the country. Yeah, yeah. Especially you're putting a place of power. You put in a place of power and you're abusing the power by abusing the fuck out of the First Amendment to your extent, to what you to what you think the rules are, you know what I mean? You can't just go out and say outland shit, especially in a position of power. That just goes and shows you don't give a fuck about the people and you don't give a fuck about anybody else that think otherwise. I think they I think they need to revise the First Amendment, to be honest with you. They don't hey, but, all, all, all these laws are, are 200. Hold on, hold on, hold on. What do you say, Kay? Sorry, sorry. No, let go ahead, Ian. 200 years or what? Oh, well, the, 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 the laws in the United States are two 300-year-old laws made from a different time that's supposed to attach to a different era throughout the United States, right? It's a living document. It's supposed to be changed. Exactly. At what point do you say uh, how many deaths the, the how many deaths have to be have to be put out for 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 people to realize like fuck we're living by a literally an enlightenment period of laws that really don't apply to the fullest extent to everybody in living in America. It's a document. That's what some people don't understand. It's a living document that's supposed to be changed. When they look at the Constitution, they look at it as if it's the fucking Ten Commandments. You know, it's exactly. set in stone. And no, that's not. That's why we have 26 fucking amendments. You know, it's been changed that many times. I think the First Amendment should be, yeah, you have a freedom of speech. Well, you don't have a freedom of this fucking hate speech and bullshit. That's what you don't get to do. You want to have your opinion on something, that's fine. But as soon as it becomes hate speech and just that's pure bit, that's when it, no, no, no. My bad, Kay. I, I just didn't get that point through. You feel me? Like, you good, bro. You good. You good. I promise you, you good. 
Like that was that would need to be said versus what I was gonna say. Uh, oh. So now, so we've got okay. So we've gone into this show about two hours, but I think everything that has been said needs to be said on a widespread scale. It's, I don't really want to end the show on a shitty note. But in times like this, you know, the only light that you can really shed is stick together, walk together, protest together, talk together, you know, and learn to understand, you know, your fellow community members, your fellow Americans, not even just black Americans, black community. We're all we're all the same fucking country. We're all Americans. We should all be standing up as one, you know. But I know I, I had said before that uh, my buddy Justice uh, was going to join us today, but he uh, he's got a rally to lead. He's out there fighting the fight, you know, doing his thing. Um, he will be on next week, though. He assured me that. So we'll get, you know, be able to talk to him a little bit about what, more about what's going on because I do anticipate these protests going on longer than a few weeks. I would hope it does. I hope it doesn't just like die off after you. And Mad Six, you had put that up on a post a little while ago. I had said, don't let it, you know, things that are getting reopened, you know, later on in the month, don't let that distract you from what the goal is. Yeah. 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 They're talking about California reopening gyms and schools, and that's because they're trying to get you out these protests. Go, they're trying to get you out to do something else. I'm like, hey, you get your exercise out there marching. You ain't got to go to no gym to do it. <laughs> it's summer. School with schools need to be open for right now. These kids ain't going back to school. People ain't stupid. They finna send their kids back to school right now anyway. So it's like, just keep marching. Like uh, tomorrow morning, uh, NAACP down at Golden One. I'm going to march with them tomorrow morning. And what then time? I just found, uh, I think that's at uh, nine o'clock. And then tomorrow night up here in Rockland, they uh, marching up here in Rockland tomorrow night at seven. So I'm definitely going to be out there getting my voice heard. So. Oh, yeah. I think I, I, might, I might actually have to. 9 a.m., you said? At yeah, Golden yeah, 1? 9 a.m. Yep, Golden 1, starting at Golden 1. I might have to get out there because. I feel like saying shit online, yeah, wearing the mask at work is one thing, but I still don't feel like it's enough. Mm -hmm. Still don't feel like it's enough. So let's do everything that we can um, to get out there. Anybody who can protest at any time, do it. Show, Show your support. Be out there with your brothers. Be out there with your sisters, aunts, uncles, anybody that you can bring out there. Let them, you know, let everybody know. Let the movement know. Let Black Lives Matter. Let Black people, fellow Americans, know we're with you guys. All right. So it's just as shitty as things are right now. We are going to get through this. I promise you. I promise you, we're going to get through this somewhere in the long run. But. We all got to have each other's backs. We all got to walk with each other hand in hand. And no matter what happens, if you're out there protesting, be safe. You're there for a peaceful protest. But remember, right now, to some of these cops, peace doesn't mean a fucking thing. Okay? It could take one small noise or one thing that'll get one cut, just and they just start going. It, they don't have, you know, the ability to control their adrenaline. 
You know what I mean? So if you're going to be out there, be safe. If you are not going to be out there marching, do whatever it is you can, whether it's online, on Twitter, on Facebook, on Instagram, whatever the hell it is you can, get it out there. The message needs to be out there. Don't let anybody get comfortable with what's going on. All these, as shitty as these fucking images are, as much as they hurt, as much as you know your heart hurts for these people, as much anger as you have, that needs to be resignated out. The voice needs to be heard. Nothing ever changed by somebody being silent. Okay? Nothing ever changed by somebody not doing anything. So we got to go out there. We got to show support. And I'm speaking for, you know, I mean, for myself, my, I'm Mexican. I'm Hawaiian. I probably have a little bit of German in me. I have no idea. Yeah, but for myself, for my family, for my brother-in-law, Rakeem, you're watching this. Nevea, London, you too, Linda, you know, Jennifer, Danita, all of you guys, you know, Kay, you know, Mad Sticks, anybody, Amari, everybody, anybody out there who's watching this right now. We got your back. We're here for you guys. Not everybody's Obviously, not everybody's a racist, but we can all fight them. I'll tell you that much. We'll all go out there. We'll all do our part. If you want to protest, I'm sure there's websites all over the place that you'd be able to find, you know, where you can be able to go get your voice heard, you know, get your poster boards, go by yourself, your mask, whatever it is that you need to do. You want to feel like you get your voice heard, you do whatever it is that you can to do that. So uh, for myself, for uh, EA Rocco, Country K here, DJ Mad Six joining us next Be week. Boys. <laughs> Goddamn Cowboys fan. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> <Sorry>. <laughs> but uh, we'll see you guys next week. Uh, we'll be here with Justice. He'll be able to give us uh, – give us some more insight on what's going on because we'll definitely be talking more about this because I'm sure from now up until the next time we come back and talk, there's a lot that's going to happen. There's a lot that's going to happen this week. Hopefully a lot for the good. So uh, for the All Pro Joffos, thank you guys for watching here on Facebook. On YouTube, we'll get it up soon so you guys get it there. Audio version. Coming soon, Spotify, Apple Music, Google, wherever it is that you listen to pot and get it on SoundCloud too. Um, go check it out. That's Twitters. Follow us there. Facebook, Instagram. You know the deal. Go check us out. Go show the support. Get your asses out there. Let your voice be heard. It, we're, this isn't ending. We're not going anywhere. We're not going to let any distractions take hold. The the focus and basically like the focus is to keep the focus where it needs to be. We need change in this world. This is the only way we're going to change the world is by speaking up and doing what we need to do and taking a swig out of a big ass drink out of a rough day, just like EA just did right there. <laughs> yeah, I got the bottle right here, yeah, buddy. <laughs>
like, nah, hell no. Nah. I told him, I said, make sure my motherfucking weed with you. <laughs> oh, shit. Yeah, I don't know about those white claws, man. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I had one. Never again will that shit grace my lips. <laughs> Oh, uh, I've never tried it. I don't want to. I don't want to. I can sell some with cheap liquor, bro. It's horrible. Mm. I'm good. Well, at least we can end on a, on a happy note. <laughs> <laughs> All right, you guys. We the boys. Y'all ain't going to make 12. That's another, that's another episode. <laughs> <laughs> All right, you guys. Thanks for watching. We'll see y'all again next week. Later. Peace. Later.